Hi guys, I'm just making this uh, new video uh, to discuss XTV, uh, which is now on version 2. Um, obviously, I haven't made any updates or anything to my current XTV um, video. However, I just want to discuss the new features. So if you haven't updated to 2.0, um, there is links uh, on the XTV website. So uh, if you go to the XTV.de website, okay, and then you'll see download version 2 here. Uh, and you'll be able to install it for <clears throat> whatever platform you're using it on. So you should go and install it. Uh, I'm just going to cover off on the points now and talk about what they are. Obviously, I'm, I'm not going to cover uh, off on how to uh, add a playlist uh, or add an XML TV file because that's already covered in my first video. And the first time you install it, it, it walks you through a setup. So the, the first setting um, that they've added is in version 2 is the ability... Uh, to have a separate uh, playlist, um, uh, the amount of tuners per playlist, so uh, or M3U file rather. So essentially, what this means is if you've got um, one uh, pro IPTV provider who gives you three streams and another one that has six, you can, uh, as you add them here, you can set them on a tuner basis on how many streams they have, uh, and then when you set your overall amount of streams, um, you would make that the combined total here in the number of tuners in settings uh, and it would it's going to abide by either this okay if the number is lower than the total number of streams you're allowed from your IPTV provider or if you put the maximum uh, it will use up to the amount that's allowed per playlist so that's the first um, the first change which is awesome uh, the next change is that they now allow IPTV playlists uh, with the M3U8 uh, extension. So if it's in the M3U, uh, M3U8 um, link type uh, or uh, container type rather, then you're going to be able to add this to XTV. However, the caveat is if you want an M3U8 file, you must enable the buffer. So if you go to settings and you roll, uh, scroll down to streaming, you must enable the M3U8 um sorry the buffer to stream m3 m3 and also i believe hls as well so anything that contains uh hls should should work um there's some other options here which i'll talk about in a second uh yeah which i'll talk about right now actually um uh buffers now also available or po also possible with the uh, xtvs.m3us so um basically what that means is exactly as it says there the stream is going to be passed from xtv to plex uh, and so you can add a buffer size um, to increase the uh, the buffer so that there's less um, jerkiness uh, on the streams. So essentially, it may state start it may take a little bit longer to start playing. However, uh, it shouldn't stop. Um, and you can adjust this buffer size depending on the quality of your connection to your IPTV provider. Um, the other option is you can now restream. So <clears throat> I, this is a little bit of a, I guess, um, interesting option that's being added. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know how IPTV providers feel about this, but essentially what this means is is that um, if, you know, you're sharing your uh, IPTV provider via Plex or MB uh, with your friends or family or people, um, then if one person is watching say a pay-per-view event and another person is watching the same pay-per-view event on the same channel uh this restreaming option as long as this is enabled essentially means that only one stream from your iptv provider is being used uh and so it gets around that requirement to have uh iptv providers giving you six or ten uh, concurrent streams so you could, you know, you could have 30 people on your Plex or MB account streaming a pay-per-view event. And with this option, it would appear to IPTV provider that there is only one concurrent stream coming from your connection. Uh, so take that as what you will. Um, there's support for dynamic bandwidth playlists. Uh, I don't know what that is, to be honest with you. Um, I haven't looked into it enough to understand it. Um, I haven't used the feature yet. I just assume it's part of the streaming buffer. And uh, once I post this video, I'm sure that uh, there'll be some more exp explanation 
given to that, what that is. Um, again, it sounds good. I guess it's an improvement. Uh, there's a new filters group, which is amazing. So <clears throat> we're moving now onto filters. So in the new filters area, um, you'll see it's going to look very different to uh, how you've previously filtered. If you remember when you used to filter in, uh, in XTV version 1, you basically had to manually add the name of the... Um, the group that you want to add it, and then when you went to mapping, it would appear. It's gone. It's gone now. So when you add your playlist file, it will automatically gr grab the group names uh, or the group titles from your IPTV provider. So all you got to do is just leave this as M3U group title. So my provider is um, Iris. I'm sure uh, nearly all providers do this, and you'll see that they provide a number of group title names. So for example, if I uh, if I wanted to, you know, add to my uh, lineup, um, let's say, uh, let's find something here that's kind of interesting. I don't know. Actually, Japanese, Japanese, because uh, I know there's only one channel that's on that. Uh, so J Japan, and then all. I don't do anything else. I just choose Japan and click save. Now you'll see it's alphabetically sorted. Um, that channel will be now added uh, to the to the mapping. Um, if if there's an XML file or XML TV file that aligns with it, so once that's it, you'll see I didn't give it a group name. So if I now call this, uh, I use like A5 just to keep them in order because the order that you set them in the filter playlist is the order that they're going to appear in the mapping section. Okay, so if I just call it A5, it will then. Well, it probably won't appear at the end in mapping now because I initially added it. It's going to be the very first channel. Technically, it should be. We'll see. Um, but it, it should appear fifth in the list in the filter. Now, when I go to mapping, okay, you'll see. Uh, let me just check that it's up there. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So, um, because I added it and it, it didn't have a name, that so you, it's added as one of the very first channels. So, it, it slotted itself in here into a spare channel because it was at, at the top of the list in my filter. So, just to go at it again, when I first added it, I didn't give it a name like A5, which would put it at the bottom of the list. It gave it no name. So if you give it no name, it's always going to be at the top of the list. Um, and so you should always give it a name depending on the order you want it in. So I just use A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then it's just going gonna, gonna to self-order. And that way, you know, because I'm using like different, I have it in a particular order that I want it. You want to be able to filter in a, in a playlist file when you add it to like your MB account or your Plex account. So... <clears throat> Once you've added it, you go to mapping and you can see that, uh, that there's the channel. There's that single Japanese channel. Again, just like uh, um, uh, in version one, the, ca the channel's currently not enabled. It's red because there is no XML TV file that aligns with that from my provider. I can still add it, but I can just create a dummy. So it would not. it's not going to give you the name of the, um, the program that's on. It's just going to say Japanese NHK World HD. So I would, could add a dummy. You can set the limit. And then you can you know, upload a logo, or whatever, change whatever you need to. And now you see that I've added dummy. It's now active. And so if I go to my MB account now, uh, and I've switched to, to MB for, for live TV, it's just much better for live TV. I, I don't feel it's better for movies or TV shows, but definitely for um, uh, live TV support, it's, it's much better. Um, and... If I go to um, the live TV section here, okay, and I refresh the guide data, which may take a second, uh, but it's going to add in here. Now, in MB, it's just like how you would add any HD home run device. I'm not going to talk through that. That's There's much, a lot of documentation on how to add live TV providers to uh, MB and Plex now, and my version one guide talks about Plex. If you can uh, add the um, if you can add the HD home run to Plex, you can most definitely do it in MB because it's extremely simple. Again, you just add your XTV uh, uh, server port, server uh, IP, server IP and port, and then the same thing, um, which is also all here. Okay, so there's your server IP or your XM, um, your XTV server and IP, and then here's your XML file link as well. So we've refreshed it. So now <clears throat> when I go to live TV in MB and I click on guide, okay. 
it's not there because for some reason ah it would help if you click save it would help if you do that first so make sure you click save because i actually haven't updated uh this playlist file but if i did then did that it would appear in here um yeah little mistake from me but whatever i'm not going to re-record this so what else is there <clears throat> oh new custom channel logos so um if we want to uh do um uh, logos okay in here you just click on the channel and you can change the uh, channel logos very simple um and if also you can now also change uh the group title so if you want to move this channel say that this channel is part of the japanese group title right now and i wanted to move it into the uk sports network group title you can do that from here as well um there's also image caching okay um which means uh, it's in settings and it i believe it's just here there's the image caching settings uh so I'll, I'll enable it right now all images from xl xml tv file are cached allowing faster rendering of the grid, grid in the client um downloading the images may take a while and will be done in the background so if you've if you want to save the images which i do i haven't enabled that yet uh it's it allows them to render much faster so when you click you know channels instead of them some of these channels aren't loaded it's pretty fast because uh i believe uh mb saves some of the channel logos itself anyway um you can do that as well i think plex may pull them from the hd home run service which is in this case xtv um what else uh and the the last one is the processing of xepg data is much faster which is good which just means that the software is going to perform much faster. So it's a quick update to what version 2.0 gives you. The biggest, well, two of the biggest things is the filtering. Uh, this filtering is unreal. It allows you to organize so much easier and so much quicker. Um, so if you don't like the order that channels are in or, you know, links go dead or something happens, it, this just allows you to do it so much quicker. And the second thing, which is uh, amazing is this restreaming option uh, the ability to only use one connection to your IPTV provider and uh, have as many people as you want streaming from you using your MB account or your Plex uh, live TV service using home users uh, is pretty cool uh, definitely big props to the XTV devs uh, for bringing that online All right, that's me done uh, hopefully it's another nine months to my next video. Bye.